Hey guys, so another day, another issue with the uh, with the G-Wagon. So this is the, the 2013 G63 that I have that I've been working on. Driving down the highway yesterday and uh, the old little, uh, little coolant light came on. Um, and I saw the uh, the temperature needle start, start going up. So I pulled off to the side, popped the hood and saw that it's, uh, it's steaming uh, pretty bad out the back of the engine. So. I uh, limped it to the, there's a gas station and uh, put some water in it and it was just pouring out the back. So had to get it towed home so now it's at my house here so now I'm trying to kind of figure out where the water's coming from. So I've got a hose stuck in my uh, in my reservoir there and I'm sure you can see in here a bit of a puddle here for me. So it's just pouring out the back. Um, it's really hard to see what's actually going on back there. Um, so I've got my um, little camera here and I've got it hooked up to my phone just to try to kind of identify where the water's coming from. So it's really hard to see what's actually going on there. But it looks like it's some sort of a plastic valve that goes into the head. I think I've seen this issue before online that I, I found some guys replacing these plastic fittings. So I'm assuming that's the part that's failed. Now, um, it seems like it should be fairly accessible from the back, but I'm not sure if I have to actually pull like the intake and stuff off because that's what I saw one guy on YouTube, he had a CLS 63 and he had a, I think it was the same thing that broke on his. And he ended up having to take his whole top of the motor apart essentially. He had to take the intake off, the intercooler uh, and all that just to get to that piece at the back. So, I mean, I do have a bit of space back here as you can kind of see. I mean, there's some room. I've got my light here right now, but... Um, I'm kind of hoping that I'll be able to get to it, but in any event, I think this piece at the back here has to come off. This is some sort of a, that's what he had to take off in his video, the guy that I was watching on YouTube, um, in order to get that fitting off. Um, so I might have to unbolt that unit there. I think it's some sort of a, a I don't know what it's for exactly. I have to look up the part number to see what it actually is. But in any event, you can kind of see the water pouring out there. Um, and sorry, I can't really get a better view. But yeah, there's a bit of a better view. You can see the, th the water is just pouring out of the thing. So I don't know why Mercedes chose to use plastic fittings on coolant lines, but in any event, I guess we'll start taking this thing apart and uh, uh, I think I'll put it in my garage first. I don't know how long this is going to take and it's kind of started raining. So uh, I'll put it in my garage and try to get that uh, fitting out whatever is actually broken so that I can go, go to Mercedes and get a new one. So let's uh, get going on this. All right, so now that we're in the garage, I've got this thing parked. Um, I've got the hood fully open. I removed the uh, the hood prop to kind of give myself a bit more space since I'm gonna be working on the driver's side here. It's a nice thing about having those big exposed hinges on these things is that, that it lets you open the hood right up and get it out of your way. So we're gonna be working back here. Um, I looked up what this thing is on the back of the engine. It's actually a, a vacuum pump um, So we'll need to get that out of the way and that'll give us access to the uh, the two bolts that hold the uh, the failed valve um, It's supposedly a, a heater control valve or whatever they called it and they never used it Mercedes has since revised the part to just like a regular fitting um, I ordered the fitting and I'm waiting for that to show up. Um, nobody had one in town, so 
it's going to take a couple days to come in but in the meantime we'll uh, take this thing apart and hopefully save uh, save myself the trouble of having to move, remove the uh, the intake and everything else because on most cars that this engine's in um, this firewall area is really tight and you can't really get into here but on the on the, the G wagon it kind of you have a bit of space on the back so um, let's get this vacuum pump out of the way We'll get some of these vacuum lines and whatever else. I mean, this big line here, that's an AC line, so not much we can do there. Um, but uh, I just noticed that the little nut that's supposed to hold it in place is missing. So we'll need to find a new nut for that. But anyway, let's get that vacuum pump off. Apparently the vacuum pump is held on by three uh, E10 bolts. Uh, so uh, you'll need the, the special e-torx sockets which are an inverted torx to be able to uh, to get that pump off so let's get going <laughs> So, got the vacuum pump out of the way. It pretty much uh, came out without too much trouble. The bottom bolt was a bit of a pain to get out, but it wasn't too bad. Um, in the process, I kind of pulled on this line a little too hard and broke it. Um, these plastic lines, they're all obviously pretty old and brittle. So, I'll have to... Um, Maybe try to find a part number on it, see where it goes. It kind of, it goes back here into the, uh, into the intake. So I need to get a new one of those. I'll pull this intake cover off and figure out where that line goes. But anyway, so now we've got this, uh, the valve exposed, which has failed. As you can kind of see it down here, it's a little hard to see. Let me put my light a little better. Maybe like that. So, as you can see down here, this is not supposed to move. That's supposed to be attached to this bottom piece here. Um, so, uh, it obviously has separated and that's where all the coolants are coming out of. So, we've got one bolt holding the top piece here and then we should have another bolt on the bottom.